And now, your host of Video LP, Madeline Woods. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a brand new season of Video LP. I'm your new host. My name is Madeline Woods, and I hope you're ex is, you are. <laughs> See how excited I am? I hope you're excited as I am about all the new shows we've got planned for you. But enough with the preliminaries. Here's the real excitement. My guest today, his fans say he's sexy and fine, and he can definitely get a date with just about every sister that I know. Oh, yeah, and he sings, and he produces, and he writes songs, too. That's about it. In fact, no other words are necessary when you talk about I'll Be Sure. He's hanging out with me here on Video LP today. He's going to perform his latest single, and the phone lines will be open, too, so you can talk, too. I'll Be Sure. The number is 1-800-344-2388, so don't move. I'll see you right there after this break. Welcome back to Video LP. My name is Madeline Woods. About five, maybe six years ago, every male sex symbol out at that time was put on standby while the new guy on the block took over. His debut album, In Effect Mode, was an instant hit with cuts like Night and Day, Off on Your Own, and Rescue Me. It sold over two million copies. Now, a couple of years later, he came back with the LP, Private Times, and The Whole Nine, and that turned out the hit, Misunderstanding. And now he's back again, and already people are talking about Al B. Shore's latest album, Sexy Verses. We're going to find out what right now. Call them, though. The number is 1-800-344-2388. Al B. Shore on Video LP. Hello. How are you? How you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm so glad you were here to kick off the brand new season with oh, me. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for coming. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Uh, sexy Verses what? <laughs> <laughs> um, explicit lyrics. No, actually, <laughs> actually, it's um, the album. I wrote the album about every aspect of love, and love is very sexual and sensual, and so uh, you know. Yeah, it's a whole <laughs> different flavor this time. I mean, yeah. always you always have romantic songs in your albums, but this time there is a more sensual, sexual kind of mood to it. Well, I kind what of, did you I make grew up your... since then. I kind oh, of you grew, grew up, up since, since then. then. Yeah, you know. So I'm you not, matured. Right, stuff. exactly. So I'm, I'm just writing about all of my experiences, you know. So. It's not, I'm not 18 anymore. So, right. Yeah. Well, that was my <laughs> next question. Yeah. What did you make up your mind to do when you decided to do sexy verses? Just be as real as possible. You know, uh, a lot of writers, you know, and producers are, are afraid to, uh, you know, the translation from the writing to the CD always gets watered down. Mm -hmm. And I just tried to, every, every situation has to be real. Every scenario, if you, you heard the album, you know, right. you hear the, the little scenes beautiful. and so on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The scenes and, uh, you know, the bathtub and you know, everything mm -hmm. has to be as real as We're possible. We're going to talk so about that, the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, basically it's so that someone can relate to, I mean, it's a situation that you can put yourself into. As a writer, I want to make sure that anyone listening to anything of Al, be sure you live it. Mm -hmm. You know, anything from th that, I, you know, that I've done with Jodeci or Tevin or right. whoever, you have to live it. You know, so did yeah. you really live all of these tunes on here? Because when I was listening to the album, you sing everything in first person. And I was like, well, this must really be what yeah. he was going through at the time. Yeah, just different experiences in my life, you know, and uh, just try to tell the truth. So they were all yeah. your ideas. Nobody helped you come up with the concept for the album, or this is all totally mm -hmm. I'll be sure. No, actually, I, I had the pleasure of working with Devante Swing, you know, mm -hmm. from Jodeci and Kevin Dean, uh, uh, Howie T. You know, and I, I just, I mean, to me, two heads are better than one. So yeah. I, mean, I always collaborated with someone on it, but, you know, I write everything and stuff, so. You know, and uh, just try to be as real as possible, you know, let, let, especially to let people know. Because usually, and not even in a negative sense of it, but misery loves company. Mm -hmm. So anytime somebody's going through pain or sorrow or something, you know, whether it's a relationship, you, it's good to know that somebody else is going, you know, I mean, it takes right. some of the hurt away. That so they can relate someone, exactly, to what you're so, talking about. So, wow, oh, he's going through the same, you know, and it takes some of the pain away. So mm -hmm. maybe I could take the pain away. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope so. Yeah. There are a couple of tunes on there. Let's talk about um, Natalie. What was your inspiration for that one? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh. That's a pretty one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a setup. <laughs> uh -huh. It's definitely a setup. Okay. I want to um, know. Okay. Because, see, when I first heard it, I thought you were saying Madeline. Oh. But you said Natalie. Actually, I was. So my feelings were kind of hurt when oh, I found okay. out. Actually, I was. But <laughs> <laughs> um, 
That song was inspired by Halle Berry. Really? Yes. Uh-huh. Don't ask and, me no uh, <laughs> So what? No, I mean, no, just, it was inspired by Halle Berry. Um, my former manager, Andre Hurrell, asked me to do a, a love, the love song for the, the movie uh, Strictly Business, uh -huh. which Halle was in. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we, he introduced us and so on and so forth, and we met on the movie set, and we shook hands, and I looked at her, and uh, that's the song that came up. That's it. Natalie, <laughs> if you just come back to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So, that, I mean, that's just basically the song I came up with from that, yeah. Okay. I think we got some phone calls for you. You know people want to talk to you. Okay. Want to take one? Yeah, let's Okay, go. let's go. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Tell me your name and where you're calling from. Hello? How you doing? Doing all right. Good. Welcome to the show. All right, I wanted to ask Al, you know, Will Local. Can you speak up a little bit, please? We can barely hear you. You know, we wanted to ask Al, Will Local Group, you know. You know, everybody likes us down here, but there's no way that we can be discovered. You know, there's nobody to discover, you know what I'm saying? You know, we just wanted to know if he could hook us up with anybody. <laughs> cool K and the golden one want to know if you can hook them up with anybody. Oh, wow. Um... Well, the best bet is the. Do, do they have a demo? You have a demo? They might be gone already. They're if gone? they do okay, have well, a demo, basically, what if you have a demo or something, uh, especially in New York, um, now that well, now I have my own label called Short, right. Short Time Records, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can send, uh, you know, tape. I mean, you send the tapes or basically, like, okay, I'll tell you the story of Joe to see. They, right. they all got in the car, no money, whatever. Like they, between the three, all three of them, they, or four of them, they had like three hundred dollars. They drove to New York. From Atlanta. Right. From actually from Charlotte. Oh, they left from Charlotte. From, I think from Charlotte, right? Mm -hmm. And they uh, they came and they sat in the office, you know, of my management company from you know back then, and uh, they sat there for like what eleven, twelve hours just waiting to be heard. But they were persistent. It's right. like you have to be persistent, and uh, you know, for somebody to take it seriously. And of course, as you know, they can sing a parking ticket. I mean, they, you know, those so, boys uh, can sing. Yeah, yeah they you sure helped. can. You co-wrote most of that album with them, didn't you? I worked with the guys. Basically, I mean, they, they came with... I met them on tour. I was on tour with Bobby Brown and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and New Edition. And uh, I remember they snuck, they snuck backstage to come meet me and so on and so forth. And uh, they were just real nice guys, you know, real nice guys. And yeah. it just so happens it's a small world. Yeah. Later on, they, uh, they came to New York and they signed with Uptown. And uh, Puff Daddy... Uh, called me in to, you know, help with the project. and Because uh, they just have so much talent. All they needed to do was have it corralled. I mean, they're just they're bursting with talent. Right. And I just helped them just, you know, put the format together and, you know, and just kind of smooth the whole and thing out. Make it's a, a listening pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk more about your record label and production company, but right now we got more phone calls because we can't forget about them. Let's go. Hello, caller. Tell me your name and where you're calling from. Hi, my name is Misty Coleman, and I'm calling from Cincinnati, Ohio. And I was just wondering, um, how many women do you have? <laughs> how many women do you have, How many Al? women do I have? Yeah. Right now, my, my music is my woman. And that's, uh, you know, that's what I'm, I'm married to right now, my music. I mean, this music is so important because I like to eat. So therefore, <laughs> I need to. Oh, well, that's 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 love. You know, you know, that's why it's called sexy verses. I mean, you know, it's every aspect of it. And you know, sometimes you're in the middle of a relationship, or you're out of one. So, so where are you right now? Because no, 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 we no, want to no, know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Translation. I'm I'm, uh, I'm in love with my music right now. Oh, I really okay. am. And I'm, you know, we'll see what happens. You know. Okay. <laughs> well, back to short time. Now, this is a brand new record label, a brand new production company. How did you go from just being a performing artist yourself as to wanting to take on some more people and help mold and shape them and help them along? Um, well, I'm very much, I, I was taught uh, ownership. I mean, by my parents, you know, mm -hmm. everything, ownership. You have to own things, own property, own, you know. That's and, right. And uh, it doesn't make any sense to work real hard and, 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 and to give it away to somebody else. You know, I mean, you, it doesn't grow on trees. So, I mean, if you're going to work for it, you got you got to reap some of the benefits, you know. So, and then at the same time, I have a, a major, major uh, feeling about watching people grow. I mean, just like when I first, when we first got together with Jodeci, and now, boom, two million albums later, and then Tevin Campbell, boom, <laughs> one million albums, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's important to see me, to, to, to watch and to help other people. And I mean, I got that, I guess, from Quincy, too, because mm -hmm. we sit and talk about it, and he says, you know, you got to keep doing it. You got to push it, you produce, right? Keep doing what you're doing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, <laughs> I mean, he, all the time, he's always telling right. me, you know, between him, him and Lionel. Uh, Good advice. They always, yeah, they always keeping me going. Um, so I just like to see things grow. I mean, I like to see people, you know, artists, you know, start from here and then.